Yo, Dan Larson here. It's Synthesize Sunday 15, and today we are going to make a Discord style pad, which in context sounds like this. It's a really cool but simple sounding pad, <clears throat> but uh, let's see, it has a plus layer which makes it more interesting. So all together they sound this. On itself the pad sounds this. But the layer is this. Okay, so let's get jump into the pad, which is again very simple. As I said, it has two layers. I use an operator and a serum patch for it. And the operator patch, the operator patch, is based on saw waves, detuned saw waves. So as you can see, uh, operator A is a saw wave with zero detune. The second one is another saw wave, but I uh, just pulled away, pushed away the face a little. But and I did you did fit 15 cents, I believe, yeah. And C is again pushed away a little and 13. So I stepped forward and modulated this whole bunch, the three uh, saw waves with another sine wave. FM did with a detuned sine wave because as you as as you can see the routing is like this. I modulated A B C with operator D. So without the FMing, it sounds this. Very simple, but with the FMing. It's a little fuller. So let's go further and let's see what I did. I pushed out the spread a little to make more <coughs> stereo field wideness. And I cut out the lows because we don't want that in pads. I will use a different pad, a dif I mean a different sound for the lows. We have this aggressive middle bass tone with what I didn't like, so I filtered it out. I added some flanger to make it a little more metallic, more exciting sound. And the chorus, which widens again and fattens up the whole sound. So without these eff effects, it sounds very stupid, but with the flanger and the choruses, because we have two instances of the same chorus, it sounds a lot better. Okay, so this, uh, these are the effects on the operator patch. So the filter, flanger and the chorus, and I just pulled back uh, <clears throat> the volume a little. I use this utility tool, I don't know, I don't remember why I didn't use this here, but uh, this volume knob here or volume fader, uh, I don't know really. So let's get further and jump into the serum preset, which is the the bottom part of this whole sound. And this is a growly, deep, aggressive, monstery kind of bass here. Nothing too fancy, I believe I just took one bass sound from my monster bass pack, which is MBG 114G bass 219, this is the number of the sound. And I just used a pull fit modulation based on LFO1, I added some very slight effects like the dimension expander and the hyper distortion, very slight distortion on linear fold, some chorus and the OTT like always. And this is all here on the Serum preset. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have here. Uh, I like to use a three channel frequency split because, uh, sorry, because when I make a sound, in most of the cases it has very annoying and very, you know, ear stinging highs. So what I like to do is splitting up the whole frequ frequency spectrum into three bands and I put a frequency shifter on the high bands 
which you, which you know will it will it will make more rusty the dies more rusty and uh, for me it's uh, it will sound a lot better let's see without it i don't really like these peaks here so this is why i put a frequency shifter And those ear stinging, ear bleeding highs are gone. So for me, it's a lot better. And I can fine tune this, it, uh, fine tune the whole settings with these three knobs I added. Anyway, some EQing after the bass part. And altogether, <clears throat> they sound, I think they sound pretty well. And as you can see, I use the chord MIDI tool here <clears throat> because it is a lot easier, sorry, to make chords uh, from the from this simple pad and the scale tool to to stay at the same scale, which is G G minor. Uh, I of course I didn't use the chord tool here on the bass because I just want one note on the whole sound, but on the chordy paddy stuff we will definitely need a chord tool anyway. So this was the pad, it's a Discord style pad. And what I didn't show you is, again, is again this little rack here, where I like to automate frequency shifter knob again, but to make the sound a little more exciting on the end bars. Um, let's see. It's, it's kind of... A record stop effect which is very cool because if you <clears throat> modulate or if you you know um, assign the low pace filter cutoff and a frequency shifter frequency knob to one macro knob here on the rack it will generate a very cool record stop effect i really love to use that let me show you the settings for it so the course goes from zero to minus 234 kilohertz 2.34 kilohertz sorry and the filter just goes you know from the top to bottom we use the whole range and this is this is very cool i think record stop effect using uh, a rack in ableton I just pulled back the volume again with this utility tool and some basic, very basic EQing because we don't want that very low, very subby bass because I will use a different sub. We are talking about trap music, so we need a different sub. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you are interested, please share, like uh, uh, my videos and if you are really interested in, please drop a comment on the comment section if you want to see this sound to be creative, this, this affects something. Because in the next video <coughs> I want to show you how I made this sound. So it really depends on you and on the comments if you are interested in this effect sound i will make the next tutorial about this or if you're not then this lead sound will come okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i know i told you this but see you next time guys bye bye